A very good day to you. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. It's Thursday, July 14. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run. Every day after school, Alicia Meekins hears from her daughter, a Cornwall Middle School student, how fellow students mock her because she's black. Meekins brought her concerns to the Cornwall School Board this week with some board members saying this was the first they've heard of such behavior, and they want to look into it. Meekins outlined for members what her daughter faces in the classroom. A video on June 27th was presented on the topic of Juneteenth. A classmate said to my child, I don't know why this holiday is a big deal. When you, as in my child, were slaves, we fed you and gave you a place to live. That's good enough. When a slave was shown on TV, my child was mocked and told, hey, that looks like you. This is just one day in the life of my colored child at Cornwall schools. I could go on and on. My child has been pushed and shoved by a child whose parents wore Make America Great Again t-shirts to field day. This child also mocked her by saying the beads in her braided hair were too loud. She is concerned, saying there's obviously no discipline in the district because those same students returned to the class the following day with more racist comments. School board member Margaret Quinn was not happy to learn of the behavior. The Cornwall that I heard about tonight is not one that I'm proud to represent. So I will support policy that holds everyone accountable to create a safe space for every member of our CCSD family, regardless of race, creed, color, or orientation. Superintendent Terry Dade, himself African-American, sat quietly during the discussion. Eight teenage boys were discovered Wednesday morning in an old restaurant at 211 South Main Street in Ellenville that had been previously condemned, and they told authorities they've been there for a week. The building had been posted with orders from the village building department a couple of weeks ago. No one was supposed to be in the building, said Police Chief Philip Matrician. No one was supposed to be in there. What was discovered in there were eight juveniles. They were, uh, you know, they had bottled water and stuff in there, but there was no running water that they believed that uh, in the location. Further investigation, we found some uh, baby chickens uh, that were on the side of the building there. Conditions were were pretty deplorable. Following investigation, police arrested 24-year-old Burrick Stein of Brooklyn, who was charged with eight counts of danger in the welfare of a child and charges related to the village's ordinance violation. Stein described himself as a rabbi teacher. One of four people who apparently jumped onto a CSX freight train in Highland Falls area shortly before noon on Wednesday fell off the moving train and was located dead in the Tompkins Cove area, a railroad spokesperson said. Train traffic was stopped near the area of River Road and Old Route 9W in the Tompkins Cove area to all traffic for local police to investigate. Police confirmed all four persons were located and one was fatally injured, the railroad officials said. More news right after this. Find over 100 retailers allowing you to spend hours shopping safely at the Galleria at Crystal Run. Enjoy the big brands and the diverse selection of family-owned stores all in one location. The Galleria at Crystal Run offers dining options for everyone with Fuji 110 Grill, Allen's Mediterranean Grill, and Peru Cuisine. Discover the Mid-Hudson Valley's premier shopping, dining, and entertainment destination, the Galleria at Crystal Run. For more information, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or visit GalleriaCrystalRun.com. A 40-year-old man who was found lying in the grass alongside a backyard swimming pool at 302 Fair Oaks Road in the town of Wallkill on July 3rd has died, Police Chief Robert Hurtman said. Yao Assad was rushed to the hospital along with an 18-year-old child found unresponsive and partially submerged in the water. The child was pronounced dead and Assad was in critical condition immediately after being transported to the hospital Police had said the child's name and when the adult died were not immediately released. The Newburgh City Fire Union maintains that had staff levels not been reduced from 10 to 7 six months ago, the 63-year-old woman who died in the June fire on Lander Street could have been saved. 
The city is standing by its narrative that staffing had nothing to do with it, but rather a delayed 911 call, a burning staircase, wires in the way of a ladder truck, and a trailer blocking a responding fire truck caused the incident. At this week's city council meeting, Fire Union President Nick Benedetti countered those claims. This isn't the movies. This isn't Chicago Fire. We can't just run into a building filled with smoke and fire. There are strategies, there are tactics to everything we do in order to have a successful outcome. Mayor Torrance Harvey continues to maintain the issue in the Lander Street Fire was not staffing levels. And he said the shift change was enacted earlier this year to reduce firefighter overtime. Legislation sponsored by State Senator Elijah Reichlin Melnick, Assemblyman Kenneth Zabrowski, and Assemblyman Michael Lawler to rename a section of Route 45 in memory of fallen firefighter Jared Lloyd has been signed into law by the governor. Route 45 between New Hampstead Road and East Jackson Road is now designated as Firefighter Jared Lloyd Memorial Highway. Jared Lloyd, a member of the Columbian Fire Engine Company No. 1 in Spring Valley for over 15 years, died during the rescue effort at the Evergreen Court Home for Adults Fire on March 23, 2021, as he was attempting to save residents at the facility. Law enforcement from several federal, state, and local agencies conducted simultaneous pre-dawn raids at five locations on Tuesday in the city of Poughkeepsie. State police are handling the case that involved personnel from the FBI, ATF, Dutchess County Sheriff, City of Poughkeepsie Police, and other agencies. A helicopter involved in the raids woke up many residents at around 4 in the morning as it hovered over locations that were being raided. Sources say that guns, drugs, money, and other property were seized during the raids. State Senator Michelle Henchy has secured a $50,000 state grant for the West Hurley Fire Department to support its purchase of a utility track vehicle used to fight fires and rescue injured firefighters in areas inaccessible by fire trucks. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. The news today is brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run.